What's going on guys, my name is Cynic and welcome to another top 5 biggest problems video. Now this is kind of an unofficial series where I basically go over my top 5 biggest problems or biggest complaints that I have for the latest DLC inside of Infinite Warfare. Now I've done a video like this on Shell and Shuffle and Attack the Radioactive thing. I was going to let Beast from Beyond slide considering it's the 4th and final DLC of Infinite Warfare plus I wasn't too sure if too many people were into these types of videos considering I basically did nothing but talk shit about the map and you know mention all the problems I had with it but I was getting asked by quite a few people and I'm more than happy to make this video so just sit back relax and let's talk about my biggest problems with this map So coming in number 5 we have the magic wheel. Now this affects more of the group of people that are trying to get the easter egg done as quickly as possible or trying to go for the super easter egg because I feel like this isn't that much of a problem if you're going for high rounds because you pretty much have an infinite number of times to spam the wheel. But damn does this wheel suck. This epitomizes the recycling blocks from Black Ops 3. There has been multiple games, matter of fact I'm pretty sure it's like 50% of all my games I don't get a weapon that I haven't gotten already until about round 17. If I'm trying to go for a speed run I'm always ready to go on round two but because the wheel is complete shit sometimes I don't go to round 17 if I want the ideal weapons I really don't think this one needs that much explanation the wheel in this map is just horrible and I really do hope they fix it but I don't really think they're going to I feel like it was intentionally made that way to make the map feel harder than what it really is but anyways the wheel can very easily procrastinate a quick easter egg attempt and can be very annoying to constantly hit it out of multiple locations to get the same weapons over and over again and that's why I put that here and Number five. So coming in at number 4, this is actually the part that whenever I do these videos, I always get some group of people disagreeing with me. That's cool, but I still feel like Beast from Beyond has the worst wall weapon selection out of all 5 maps inside of Infinite Warfare. Now with the exception of the Oni Kaiken and the VPR, which both have some drawbacks of their own, which can very much easily be overlooked, but still, you know, you'll only have 2 decent weapons, one of which is a pistol, the other one's a submachine gun, and there's no decent assault rifle on this map as a wall weapon. Yes, we have the G-Rail, which sucks. We also have the X Eon and the Rekt, but I mean, let's be honest, past a certain point, none of these weapons are even good for high rounds. You're basically forced to rely on the Magic Wheel, which, as we already said, completely sucks. And to add insult to injury, we also get the 2187 as a wall buy, which I always forget is there. The EBR 800, the P-Law, and the Proteus. Um, I never even pick up the Proteus. I only picked it up for this video. That gun is complete trash, in my opinion. But why they chose to make the Magic Wheel on this map suck so badly and give us such horrible wall weapons. Weapons, I have no clue. The only bright side to having all these crap weapons on the wall just means that we won't get them out of the wheel. That's the only bright side I can see out of having them accessible from the start uh, by being wall weapons. But it's very annoying and extremely frustrating to not have a single decent wall weapon that you can always rely on and basically being forced to hit the wheel if you want to complete the easter egg or if you want to make sure that you survive for high rounds you're basically forced to access the wheel and between the shit luck and the shit wall weapons going for high rounds or even making an easter egg attempt can very easily become a headache of its own and they can frustrate players but i wouldn't say this combination would make people stop playing this map like the other things on this list would you know wall weapons and the magic wheel ruins the gameplay but the other things ruin the experience if you know what i mean and that's why i put wall weapons here at number four so coming in at number three i figured we'd go ahead and share it between two things uh i figured we'd start off on neil first and i'd kind of elaborate on what i mean by neil not so much power at least not yet. What I mean by Neil right now, specifically during the Easter egg, is after you complete Neil's puzzle, you now have to entangle his head and carry him from the terminal to the pack punch room. Now, I want to tackle this in two parts as well. I feel like this step should be made easier if you're playing solo. I feel like this is probably the most challenging step if you're playing by yourself. If you got a team, then it's no problem, but if you're playing by yourself, you really don't have protection from zombies. I mean, yes, you can use fortune cards, but not everyone's lucky enough to have fortune fortune cards to help you out in a solo game. So I think this step should be made easier where the path is at least a little clearer and you know which way to take Neil's head or strictly in solo the amount of zombies is reduced significantly or as a matter of fact not even the amount of zombies instead reduce the amount of time it takes for these doors to open sometimes there's a delay 
and they take forever to open and that's just enough time for you to either drop Neil's head or to be ambushed by three to four zombies and like I said if you're playing solo you have no one to help you. So reducing the amount of zombies and reducing the time that it takes for the doors to open would greatly benefit solo players. Now whether if you're playing solo or playing with a team I think the path that you have to take for Neil needs to be a little clearer and a little more obvious because like I said this is the hardest step in the easter egg for me because if you fail the step a nuke drops and nine times out of ten a new round will automatically start so if you keep failing the step you'll automatically just keep burning through rounds and nothing's more frustrating than having to go through rounds because neo won't open a fucking door so this step right here in the easter egg definitely needs to be addressed because fuck it's super annoying now making my way over to the venom x i'm talking about the weapon in general not just in terms of getting it but just how it performs for those of you that didn't know, inside a director's cut, you can actually get the Venom Y, which is the upgraded version of the Venom X, directly out of the magic wheel. But for those of you that aren't lucky enough to have director's cut, you have to go through all kinds of bullshit for a mediocre wonder weapon at best. Now, I've never tried the base Venom X, but the Venom Y feels like it's too weak to kill a damn thing. The Venom Z is too weak for me to actually consider it a double-packed weapon. It just feels subpar, especially for a wonder weapon. Now, a complaint that I've been hearing a lot lately in regards to the Venom Z is whenever you shoot the grenade on the ground there's a delayed explosion people complain that that explosion takes too long to activate I don't have that same complaint I think that's fine my complaint is we don't get enough ammunition the reload animation takes too damn long and the gas that you shoot the cloud does not stay long enough I think the weapon needs to be buffed have the reload animation be a little faster give us a little extra ammunition and at the very least make that cloud stay longer as of right now I feel like the Venom Z is probably one of the worst wonder weapons we've seen inside of infinite warfare probably right next to the mad but anyways that neil easter egg step and the venom z is a very disappointing wonder weapon and they're both very frustrating things to get around but once you get around it it's kind of a whatever deal like i said ruins the gameplay not so much the experience and that's why i put both of those things here at number three Alright, so coming into number two, that said everything, but what I basically meant by everything was in higher rounds when everything starts being thrown at you, from cryptids to clowns to ninja zombies and slashers. All of this thrown together can pretty much equal an abrupt end of your high round attempt. Now, in yesterday's video, I said that I loved that about this map because it added a challenge, which is true. I do love that this map does that. However, that doesn't change the fact that when a ninja zombie spawns on you or a slasher immediately spawns behind you and you had no clue and you immediately go down down from one of the two doesn't mean that's justifiable or any less aggravating you know I can't tell you how many games I failed or had to restart because out of nowhere a slasher was spawned behind me and I immediately went down I had no clue he was even there I think that's something that needs to be fixed the ninja zombies need to have their range nerf there's really no way to get around the fact that if you're gonna get drop kicked in the face you're gonna get it even if you tried to slide, you still get hit sometimes. But I mean, the slasher, that needs to be fixed, especially if in a solo game, we're going to be getting two slashers at a time. They should not have the ability to instantly down like that. And it's only round 20. It's not even that high of a round. Like if it was round 60 or something, it would have been whatever. But at round 20, they should not have the ability to instantly down you. On round 25, we should not be facing two slashers that both can equally down you in one hit. I also don't think they should spawn on you. They should spawn at least in another room or a couple feet away from you where you have enough time to actually escape them. But I mentioned the things that are gonna be higher up in this list ruin the experience and it's stuff like this where you instantly go down off of some bullshit like that that you just wanna quit the game and get off this game for the rest of the day but that's why i put the slasher and ninja zombies here at number two because i feel like it's stuff that needs to be tweaked now before we get into the number one spot here's a few honorable mentions uh there's a glitch going around i was informed by a subscriber that he was experiencing this basically i guess his audio is cutting in and out on beast from beyond and it's not just his audio i guess he's not experiencing character dialogue there's no weapon sounds going on and this is also affecting his game i don't know to what extent but basically he said it's affecting him to the point where he can't actually get the venom x because of the morse code step he can't hear the beeps i've experienced this but it's only come in the form of not hearing any character dialogue when i spawn in or throughout the duration of that game i'm not too sure of how many people are actually experiencing this 
But based off of what I've seen and based off of what I'm hearing from him, there seems to be a variety at the level of severity of this bug. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is yesterday, the Up and Atoms glitch for the Perkaholic was fixed. In case you guys missed out on that video, I guess there was a glitch going around where if you actually completed the Ghosts and Skulls machine and you're under the influence of a Perkaholic, the game would not allow you to pick up Up and Atoms again. That's been fixed, but I noticed while playing earlier today, I removed Bang Bangs and it would not let me buy it back. It was taking my point but it wasn't letting me equip bang bangs again if you watch the gameplay right here you can see my points steadily go down 2,000 points but you don't see the animation of me eating the perk you also don't see the perk appear at the bottom of the screen so just be aware that bang bang seems to be glitched out in beast from beyond I checked this out on meal kick I've checked this out on change shoes it just seems to be with bang bangs I haven't gotten a chance to check it out on any other map besides the beast from beyond so just be aware and don't remove that perk inside a director's cut or if you're under the influence of a ghost and skulls completion because then you won't be able to get your perk back unless you completely die out so just an fyi for all of you So coming in at number one, we have turning on power, the cryptids, and ultimately the door system inside of this map. So in Attack of the Radioactive Thing, one of my biggest complaints was that the map was huge and every door was expensive. The Beast from Beyond isn't necessarily as big, but they did follow up with having a good amount of doors and each door being very expensive. Infinity Ward also decided to top this off with you being harassed by cryptids, which is shit for points, and a little harder than zombies, considering their lunge attack does seem to do the same amount of damage of a zombie hit so if you get lunged by two cryptids it's pretty much game over now for the majority of people the hardest part of the map is the beginning is turning power on and without director's cut that's very much true especially if you're playing solo then you're all by yourself you have to open up the map you have no points and you basically have to pretty much run from corner to corner in order to finally make your way to Neil's head always keeping the cryptids in front of you and just trying your best not to be overrun and another thing in case you guys didn't know whenever you pick up important pieces like Neil's head or any of the three bridge pieces for Pack-a-Punch, three more cryptids spawn. So be aware of that. Don't ever pick up anything if you're not prepared to deal with three cryptids. But like I said, the hardest part for the great majority of people is turning on power. And if you're constantly going to have to restart in order to finally pick up Neil's head after 10 games of trying, then obviously you're going to have a bad experience of this map and ultimately choose to not play it. And I think that's why this is going to take my number one spot because it ruins the experience. It ruins the first time impressions and for a lot of people, this is the most hated map because it's too hard in the beginning. It's not even hard, it's just annoying. But I know exactly where people are coming from. It's just too much of a chore to try to turn power on without director's cut. But anyways, that's going to do it for today's video. My biggest complaints for The Beast from Beyond. What are yours? Let me know down in the comment section. Thank you guys so much if you stood this long. I really do appreciate it. The support is just always amazing. You know, I don't expect my videos to come out as entertaining as I guess people find them. So thank you guys if you really do enjoy them. It really does mean the world to me to know that. But anyways, my name is Cynic. And until next time, guys, I'll see you all later.